Good morning. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning's session. And welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. This is the school and it's the church. And neither are we affiliated with any church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operating from eternity unto this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We have set up schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop was established on February 2021. Now, in this school, we use and teach by the true and originated the titles from the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been properly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the Word or Son is Elohim. It also been properly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We all know that each Lord must have a name, and God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Now Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in His pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize Himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word of Son, a supercorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. Now this shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. The world calls him Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior 
during the time that he walked the earth plate. A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. Now after Yahweh led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now this pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in this school to prove that everything in the universe moves and operates according to the structure and function of the streetfold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten aims of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh is to deserve and avoid being deceived by Lucifer the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men, for by man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watcher is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning our prayer by Dr. Reimer Maris, the scripture lesson is Ezekiel the first chapter in our scripture, Dr. Uh, Net Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. Good day, class, and welcome all. We'd like to ask Yahweh our Elohim to grant us like understanding, stability, knowledge in the truth, and we ask this through your son Yashim Messiah. And like I said, good morning all, good day all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
morning, class. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina. I'll be reading Ezekiel, the first chapter. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Chabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of Elohim. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of Yahweh came expressively unto Ezekiel, the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the, Ch the Chaldeans, by the river Chabar. And the hand of Yahweh was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. And a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, the four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they, the, they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their, faith, their faces, and their wings were st stretched upward Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went every one straight forward, whether the spirit was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures. And the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheeled upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their works was like unto the color of a barrel. And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a will in the middle of a will. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their wing, as for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go. And the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was the wheels, and the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of sparkling crystal. 
stretch forth over their heads above, and under the firmament were their wings straight, and were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, and the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. As I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of the fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of Yahweh. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. I have read Ezekiel, the first chapter. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All righty, thank you for that interesting uh, scripture lesson. Uh, as I listen to that song, you know, we play. Imagine, you know, the turmoil and trouble we have each day, you know, and uh, we, you know, there's always an, an oasis. If you know what an oasis is, it's a, a place out in the desert, you know, it's got water, it's got shade. Get food and all that stuff, and that's like when we come to class. We're in the oasis, come to relax. We got water. Beaver cares outside, and we come to eat. Okay, our first speaker this morning will be Dr. Will Williams, our director and CEO of Archetype Pattern Workshop. <laughs> Um, 
us um, what we're supposed to be doing, um, which I know we're supposed to be here to learn. Um, but what is our our job here? Like, what is our our purpose here? Interesting question. Well, <clears throat> you know, we say this, and, and, and you have to rightly divide a lot of the stuff that we do say. All right, for example, we'll say this. These 613 cardinal ordinances here, we'll tell you, they were not written for you right. or me. Because we were both, because we're both Gentiles. Right. See, they were Jews, they were given to Jews and Jews only. Now, the Gentiles, not going to feel left out, they did things that Yahweh told the Jews, which Yahweh never told them. They did things on their own, trying to worship what they perceived as a creator in their own body and mind. Right? I, I use this analogy all the time. Like over in India, the Hindus every year, they, they do a ritualistic baptism. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them will do a ritualistic baptism in the Ganges River. Now, baptism is here in the 613 ordinances. Yahweh told the Israelites to do that, but he never told the, the Hindus to do that. Now, the Hindus will say, well, our God or goddess told us to do this. Well, that's what you know they would say, but Yahweh would say, I never told the Hindus to do anything. <laughs> right. Or anybody else for that matter. Mm -hmm. See, he only told the Jews to do these 613 ordinances. Okay? Now, uh, gosh, I suppose the broader question, I suppose, is this. And what you're asking. See, we talk about what's on these charts and what's in the and their illustrations of what's in the scriptures. And we talk about types and shadows. Okay? We talk about the natural Jews, how they were given this law, but the natural Jews are pointing to the spiritual Jews. Right. Here. Okay? See the Gentiles, we come in, grafted in, see like a wild up, let's read that. I think that's in the Romans. Second chapter 28. For he is not a Jew, which is well, well, if you're gonna that, that's not the one I'm that's looking okay. for, but but if you wanna but since you're in the second chapter, why don't you why don't you read 2 14? Romans 2 and 14. Mm -hmm. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are the law unto themselves. See now th that's what we were talking about. That's like what the Hindus did. Or any other group that do. They did things that were elements that were in this law, which Yahweh told Israel to do. Right. But Yahweh never told the Hindus or anybody else to do anything. In fact, most of them will say this, well, our God or God is so-and-so told us to do this. They right. never said Yahweh told them to do that. Right. See? <laughs> okay? Now, I'm trying to find the scripture about uh, the wild olive tree. Crafted. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in Romans. Uh, one. I'm sorry. Let's see. What advantage then has the Jew? Where are you at? Three and one. Three. Romans three and one. Um, what advantage then has the Jew? You can read it. Or one prophet. Or go ahead. Go ahead and read it since, since you're there. Romans three and one. What advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Yahweh. See, because unto them were committed the, the oracles of Yahweh. Here. So that's the advantage they have. Because they can look at it and uh, oh, let me see over there. No, I don't see. See, they can look at this and, and look at this. This is a type of the law of the Spirit. Okay? So that was the advantage they had. Now, I, I want that switch with the wild olive tree. Google grafted. No, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get the big guns here. 
Yeah. A strong, strong yeah. boots. Yeah, those big guns. Romans the eleventh chapter. Ooh, somewhere. Uh, let's see, eleven and uh, start with eleven and uh, oh, thirteen. See, this should answer your questions about the Gentiles. Is what we do. Go ahead. Romans eleven thirteen. Mm -hmm. For I speak to you nations, and as much as I am the apostle of the nations. See the nations. He's talking about the Gentiles. In right. the King James version, it says Gentiles. Right. See when he says talking to the nations, I talk to the Gentiles. Okay. Continue. I magnify my office. Mm -hmm. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are of my people, and might save some of them. Mm -hmm. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be? Mm -hmm. But life from the dead. For if the first fruit be holy, mm -hmm. the rest is also holy. Then the rest is holy. See, this at one time, this was good fruit. At one time. Mm -hmm. All right, though it didn't save anybody, but this was the law they were under because he who despised Moses' law died under this law under two, two or three witnesses. Believe. And if the root be holy, mm -hmm. so are the branches. See, but here's the root of, of our covenant here, the New Testament. This is the root of it here. Who is Yahshua? All right, go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off, mm -hmm. and thou being a wild olive tree, mm -hmm. were grafted mm -hmm. in among them. See, now that's, that's where we come in, the Gentiles, the nations, the non-Jews. We were grafted on right. to this, a wild olive tree, so that we could partake of the root. See, go ahead. And with them partakest of the root mm -hmm. and fatness of the olive tree. Mm -hmm. Boast not against the branches. See, now don't boast against the branches. In other words, don't boast like, oh, well, I got it so good in Jews. They didn't know no better. Look, don't boast. Because, see, you came in the same way they did, right. by grace. Look here. Here's a promise given to Abraham. All right? And see, and this was the dispensation of faith. All right? Here's promise fulfilled. First to the Jews. First to the Jews. Then seven years later to the Gentiles. So because of that, we are saved, both the Jews and the Gentiles. We are saved by grace right. through faith. Okay? Because of a promise. When Abraham was given this promise, he said, I will bless all the families of mm -hmm. you. There's only two families, Jew and Gentile. See, now you can break it up into all these little tributaries, but that's basically the, the whole families of the earth. Jew, in which he said, he gave Abraham a promise that he would bless all families. Well, here they are. First the Jews, then the rest of the nations, or the Gentiles. Okay? But continue reading. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but mm -hmm. the root thee. Mm -hmm. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, mm -hmm. that I might be grafted in. See, in other words, oh, so I, I was made a special place of they got broken off and I took their place, so that makes me special, you know. No, it don't. It does not. Right. It doesn't make you anything. Be honest mm -hmm. with you. It makes you fortunate in the sense that Yahshua, you know, took you out uh, took you out of this ignorance. Okay, but go ahead. Well, because of unbelief, mm -hmm. they were broken off. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. Now you see that at first here, back here on this migratory panel. When they came up out of Egypt, 603,550 came up out of here, all right? And all of them died, mm -hmm. with the exception of Phineas, Caleb, Joshua. See, that, that, that whole generation died, and a new generation was born that went across into Canaan's land. But they died out here because of unbelief, despite the fact that 10 devastating plagues had been poured out, despite the fact that they followed a phenomenal cloud which was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, despite the fact that they saw the miraculously divided waters of the Red Sea, despite the fact that they saw manna rain from heaven, 
See, and they had an intercessor, and they had light, you know, at the, the, for, and they had constant light. Okay, and the shoes didn't wear out, the clothes didn't wear out. Despite all of that, those 603,550, they died because of unbelief. Okay? You got some got a question? I just remember uh, Joe saying, do you believe the report? Correct. That's, an, that's scripture. Do you believe the report? See, that's the thing. And, and, and that's what we try to do here. See, when we go through the tabernacle and such, people think, some people think that we're trying to read up right. on this gospel. You know, that we're, we can sit here and we can, we, we can learn it and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's really not the idea here. The idea is it's already done. Mm -hmm. Just look, look around. It's already done. The thing you have to do is review the record or review the report. This is the report. Just review the report. Do you believe the report? Right. That's really what it boils down to. It's not something me or anyone else is doing to try to say, well, look, I can make you understand it. No. The charts, which is, a, which is the vision, mm -hmm. pictorialized on a two-dimensional surface, it will teach you what you need to know. Right. If you will let it. See, that's why we go through this pattern. That's why we go through this migratory pattern, see? And we connect all these things together so that we can show you that Yahshua, who is Yahweh in the body, who is running this whole thing, whether you believe it or not, is just running it, you know, it's running it like clockwork, hmm. okay? If I could put it like that. Uh, is there anything else we, got, we want to read there? And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. No, don't, yeah, don't be high-minded because you learn a little something about this. You know, because folks do do that, I know. It's easy, well, you know, you know, because then you go out, go back out, out into the world from class, you know, and say, oh, you know, you got this attitude, I know something you don't know, you know, that kind of thing. You know, and don't be high-minded. If anything, you would, you would be more apt to want to show that person who don't know anything, you know, about because, you know, yeah, because look what it's done for you, and if it could do something for you, I'm sure certainly it could do something for the next man as far as saving your soul. Right. Okay. But continue reading. But for he always spared not the natural branches. Mm -hmm. Take heed lest he also spare not thee. Now look, if, if he didn't spare them because of unbelief, he, he, can, he, he, can, he can not spare you because of unbelief, and that has happened. You know, and IDMR, there are people who people used to think were staunch believers, you know, just fervent. I mean, I, I've been watching a couple of these videos that they've been, they've been putting out. I think it's the Lansing class back in 87. Mm -hmm. I wasn't there. I didn't go. The reason why I didn't go because I was in school at the time. And I, I was in this program and I felt, you know, if I had left for a week, they would have kicked me out of the program. That's the only reason why I didn't go. But, and I watched it, and it was good, it was good doctrine, but then there were some things that were said, and I was like, and, and that people are still stuck on. And I, and I admit, I, I, I am too, to a certain extent, you know, because it, because it was said, it was right, it was right with that. They said, well, we only got 13 more years, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, I was like, okay, this is 1987, 13, oh, 2001, okay. And so, and, and, and we fall into that trap of trying to say, well, the creation's got to go out by this time. And even Dr. Kennedy fell into that trap, mm -hmm. you know. But the thing is, it's just best to say, well, look, the age will come to an end. Actually, the age has already come to an end. We're just in between, you know, the ages as far as the fifth and the, the fourth and the fifth age is concerned. But the thing about it is, you know, that you have to stay steadfast in what you know and understand. You know, though things will, will come up and will happen and, and have happened. And still, I still trust in Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua is this pattern. Right. See, now in the scripture lesson, we read about, about a wheel in the midst of a wheel. Basically, that's basically this. There were 12 tribes that surrounded them this tabernacle. So that would be like a wheel in itself. And then in the midst of this, you have this court roundabout right. that goes around like that. That's a wheel. So that's a wheel in the midst of a wheel. Okay? And I remember 
I remember before, just before I came into class, there was a guy that wrote a book. His name was Eric Von Danik, and he wrote a book called Chariot of the Gods. And he was looking at the scripture lesson we read in Ezekiel about that. And he was saying, and I remember reading it, I had the book, I even bought it. And I had the book, and, it, and he was trying to say that this was some elaborate kind of spaceship. Huh. That's what he was saying about the first chapter of Ezekiel. This is a, this is the kind of spaceship and you know, the chariot of the gods, you know, that kind of thing, extraterrestrials and all like that. And you know, and people are, you know, they just get into anything these days, especially like UFOs and extraterrestrials, you know. And and my thing is this: people underestimate the size of the universe for one thing, because just the nearest star, and they have just discovered in the last few years that there happens to be a planet around the stars that's called Proxima Centauri, mm -hmm. right? And it's like four light years away. Do you realize how long it would take for you to get there, even if you could get there by the speed of light, you know, which they can. Because see, we've been inundated by Star Wars and Star Trek and all this stuff, and we think, you know, all we gotta do is just hop into a ship and just zoom off and, you know, teleport down and all this, and it's just nowhere near the truth, nowhere near the truth, okay? Nowhere did it. And, and so, and, and here's the thing that gets me, because people talk about extraterrestrials. Why is it that nine times out of ten when they come here, they crash? <laughs> you know, if they're supposed to be so of superior scientific intelligence, you know, how come when they get here after so, look, four light years is equivalent to, let's see, one light year is equal to six trillion miles. So four light years is like 24 trillion. I said trillion, not million, billion, trillion miles. That's just the nearest star, all right? Now, if it was somewhere else, there's a whole lot this, and you're gonna come all this way, and then you know you get here to this little speck of a planet, and then you just, and then you're gonna crash. crash <laughs> I don't get that. I don't get that. But see, but they, but, but, but this is what people get into because you don't have nothing, a basis to, right? You know, to look at. See, and so therefore. You, you'll go for anything. I mean, people go for, I mean, I remember people was going, and some people still do, go for this thing like the earth is flat. Mm. You know, that kind of thing. And, I mean, scientific, I've seen documentaries where people with degrees behind their name trying to argue that the earth is flat. And I'm like, man, this is just tripping me. But, but that's the way people are. And I mean, that's it. But it, it should show you the desperate state of mankind when we get to the point of just, to, they just believe anything. I mean, you can tell people now the sky is purple, and there are there will be somebody around here that will believe it. Oh no, that's an optical illusion. It's really purple. Yeah. You know, it's not not blue. It's really really purple. You know, so you know that kind of thing. Is there anything else in that scripture? Let's see. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Yahweh mm -hmm. on them which fell. Severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Okay, just continue in his goodness. In other words, continue in the gospel. Mm -hmm. See, to show what is happening here, okay? Now, let's see what we can do with this, with this, what she brought up. Um, let me try something here. Let's deal with the law. Let's deal with that for a minute. I want plate. I want the Tower of Babel plate. History. Tower of Babel. Oh, Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel plate, yeah. Uh, I want that. Construction of the Tower of Babel. Human government. Okay? Here's the reason why. <clears throat> because here, this is 101 years 
after the flood. Right? If there was a time when mankind could have gotten it together somewhat, see, it would have been here. Right. Alright. Now let's let's just read Genesis um, I think it's ten and eight. And just just get an idea of Genesis on it. ten and eight. Mm-hmm. And Cush begat Nimrod, mm -hmm. he began to be a mighty one in the earth. Mm -hmm. He was a mighty hunter opposing Yahweh. All right, now he was a mighty hunter opposing Yahweh. Go ahead. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter opposing Yahweh, mm -hmm. and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, mm -hmm. and Kalme, in the land of Shinar. Out of the land he went to Assyria and builded Nineveh. They built Nineveh, okay. Uh, that's good enough. Now, this is Nimrod, all right? And he was a mighty hunter, and he was the one that came up with the idea that when he built the city, to have walled enclosures, okay? He was the one that came up with that idea. Because with, with a wall, you can keep things out. And by the same token, you can keep things in, okay? And he built things, like Nineveh, he built. Right. See, just like Cain, here, <clears throat> Cain built the city of Enoch. He built it without divine specifications, without divine instructions. And he himself was the government. In other words, his word was law, whatever he said. All right. That brought about, the, in the Antediluvian age, the age of conscience. All right. And this is a whole different thing here. So now, Nimrod and his, I mean, uh, Cain and his family ruled in this age until Noah was commissioned to preach about the flood. And the flood wiped out that antediluvian civilization. Now, here we are. Noah is given the covenant, and he's told that, if, that Yahweh will not destroy the world again by fire. And a rainbow is put into the, mm -hmm. the cloud. That's a sign for that. And also was told that the fear of you and the dread of you would be on all the beasts of the field. Okay? So, when, I mean, we have it illustrated right here. So when Noah came out of the ark, okay, see, when the, when the waters receded from the flood, the animals came out first, then the man. The animals went out and staked their claim, and then the man went out behind them. And, uh, and Nimrod was a mighty hunter for, the, for this reason, because in some cases you'd stake a claim, oh, this is a nice piece of farmland, not knowing that it may have been staked out by the bears or tigers, oh my. Mm -hmm. And so the land cried out for a hero, and Nimrod was that hero. He was a mighty hunter. And look, not just against the four-footed beasts, but against the two-footed ones, you know, like thieves and robbers mm -hmm. and highwaymen, because there were people, low-level people, who just said, hey, you know something? See the fools down in the valley? We'll let them work all summer long. Right. And then when the, and when the, and then when the fall comes, they'll get they'll we'll let them work and get the harvest in, put it into the barns. And when they do the harvest in, we'll just go down there and raid them and we'll take what they got. See? See, Nimrod defended against right. those kind of animals too. Okay? And so he built the city. And he just said, look, I'll build the city. And you can come in and you can live here. You know, I will do things. You can set up a place for your business. I have my men patrol the streets so you don't get accosted, you know? You know, that kind of thing. You know, I, I never I will do these things for you. But this is what you must do for me. Right. You gotta pay taxes. Because this ain't free. You know, I'm the one that's providing all this. My men, they gotta eat too. Got some daughters, they want some wives. Mm. You know? And this is the basis for human government. You know. It is often said that the only thing permanent in life is death and taxes. And the reason why they say that, because that's what Nimrod used to say. You know, they said, you know, death and taxes are certain. They say, look, if you don't pay your taxes, death is certain. <laughs> See, that's what Nimrod said, and he was going to get his. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, and we have it right here on the board, human government. Now, this is where the different forms of human government started from. Not only that, but this is also where the religions come from, because many governments that started off early in civilizations were religious, were religious based. In other words, the, whoever the ruler was, 
was a representation of a God, you know, of that kind of thing, see. So, so they got that as well. I'm trying to find a little book. My book. Ah, I do have it. The library. Ah, yeah. I know some people say you should carry it on the phone. I'm, I'm old fashioned that way, you know. My, my mom raised me on hardcover books, so. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep them. But this is a book I would, I would recommend people to get. It is called The Two Babylons, right. or The Origin of the Paper Worship. Okay, This is where a lot of these religions get their origins from, from the Tower of Babel. Okay? Now, let's just look at it by a pattern. We tell you there are seven steps in the, in the tabernacle pattern that corresponds to the seven steps of the migratory pattern. First step is the gate. See, we're all the straight gate we're all must enter into. That's compared to the door of the Israelites' houses down here in Egypt, celebrating the Passover. The second step is the altar, uh, altar of sin and sacrifice. You know, and blood was put on the four horns. See, a continual burning here. To compare that to the Israelites eating the Paschal lamb down here in Egypt and the blood that they took from it and to put on the the lintel of the door, two side posts, posts, and the basin at the bottom, four points of blood, equaling the four points of blood here on this altar. Third step is the brace of labor, wherein you have uh, water where the priest washed himself and the sacrifice. It's a type of a burial, but it's also a type of rope washing and regeneration. Right. And that's compared to the Red Sea over here. See, well, this is a water, a, a body of water that miraculously opened. And when it opened, so they were following this phenomenal cloud when it opened, then that would be compared to the door here, see, which is an opening here, which is the fourth step. At the door, the priest was anointed by his cup of holy anointing oil. That would be compared to the phenomenal cloud that they followed. Because see, in the scriptures of uh, 1 Corinthians 10 chapter, they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea. Okay? Then this will take you up into the holy place here, which is the fifth step. These articles down here were made of brass, whereas these articles on it were made of gold. The golden seven brass lampstand, the golden table of shoe bread, the golden altar of incense. All right? In other words, to make it real succinct, light, bread, mm -hmm. intercessor. Light, bread, intercessor. Here, as we said, was a phenomenal cloud they followed out here. It was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so they kept them in constant light. They had manna rain down from heaven, which is like into the bread over here. And they had the Holy Spirit who was in Moses, see, who was the intercessor, but really, it was, you could say it was also Joshua, son of Nun, who was in that, who was the angel in that cloud. Intercessor between Yahweh and man, all right? So out here in the wilderness, they had light, bread, intercessor. Mm -hmm. The sixth step of this tabernacle pattern is the second departmental veil, blue, purple, and scarlet, that separated the holy place from the most holy place. And that is compared to the Jordan River here, which divided, all right? And this veil here divided. In the Herodian temple, when Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection happened, the second departmental veil in the Herodian temple divided in twain, okay? To echo this over here. This veil also points to Yahshua the side, because his physical body is also the veil of right. the flesh. Then we have the seventh step, which is, the, which is this Ark of the Covenant. Two archangels on top of a mercy seat. And that's compared to Canaan's land. Probably more specifically to the temple up here. Mm -hmm. Solomon's temple that sat up here on Mount Moriah. So it was a porch, a sanctuary, and an oracle. Three different parts, but one tabernacle. Because it is of divine specifications as well. And see, it was on a gradating ascent. So in other words, it looked like a man sitting on a throne, which is what this was. See, this was a seat of authority for that phenomenal cloud. Mm -hmm. See, it would fill the tabernacle and the cloud would sit between the two archangels on top of his mercy seat, which had Moses' tables of stone in here, the second tables that Elohim wrote on, a pot of manna, and Aaron's rod that's um, butted into almonds. Right. Okay. Now that's just seven steps here and seven steps here, seven basic correlations you can get as elaborate as you like, but you want to get the principles out of it, okay? Now, also in this, there's an ascending and descending principle, see, because there are angels ascending and descending on this veil. 
For example, this plate here. This is a descending plate because it starts up here with Adam and Eve up in the garden and it descends down. See, they're being cast out and then by the spirit here, but see, this is line upon line. See, this is the spirit line. Here's the angel of spirit. And see, there's a sweat on his face. That's water. That's a water line. It's praise and labor. And then he died a physical death 930 years later. Death. And there'll be the blood there. Okay, this is an ascending plate. See, here you get Noah wanting the wicked, putting the blood on their heads. See, that's like the blood here. Tabernacle and migratory pattern. And here's Noah and his sons, they're working, building, building the ark, and they're working by the sweat of their face. That's water, like the water here, like the brazen labor here. And then you see an angel here, he's giving the Noah the instructions on how to build this ark. That's spirit, draw a line, that's like the cloud here, that's like the cup of holy anointing oil here. Okay? Now that's just basic correlations to see between these two plates. And it's going to be the same correlations you're going to use on all the plates. Now here, this is the power of battle. Now, you say, well, wait a minute, isn't this is about the devil? Well, the devil goes by the pattern, too. He's not a free moral agent. Right. See, he's got to follow, he's got to follow along. To, I mean, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh is the law of the spirit. Right. See, Satan in his disobedience is really very obedient right. to the purpose of Yahweh. See, in fact, Dr. Kinley says that he is an asset to the purpose of Yahweh, see. So, so he's necessary as far as the purpose is concerned, so you have to understand how he's following along in the pattern as well. Now this plate here, this is an ascending plate and it's also a descending plate mm -hmm. as well. And we'll explain that as we go along. First here we have the satanic foundation of the Tower of Babel. Matter of fact, let's go read it. I think it's Genesis, um, I think it's the 11th chapter. Uh, Genesis uh, chapter 11 and 1. And the whole earth was of one language. Now the whole earth was of one language. Let's stop and explore that. What language might that be? Mm -hmm. It would have to be Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And someone said, well, why would it be Hebrew? Well, Moses here is the one who received this panoramic right. vision and revelation when he was called up here on the second trip. And he was shown, see, what was happening. And, 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 and Moses was spoken to, see, up here in this cloud, see, when it said, let there be light, let, there, let this happen, let that happen. But what language was, was Elohim speaking to Moses in? Hebrew. It would have to be Hebrew, see. And when he and when and when they and when Adam and, and when Moses heard Adam speak to his wife, because after he was created, he said, you know, Adam said to him, said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. What language was he speaking? Was he Hebrew. speaking English? No, he was speaking Hebrew. So up to this point here, up to this point to the time, the whole the whole world was speaking Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. And a few words. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in mm -hmm. the land of Shinar, mm -hmm. and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, mm -hmm. and bitu bitumen had they for mortar. Mm -hmm. And they said, Go to let us build us a city and a tower, mm -hmm. whose top may reach unto the heavens. Mm -hmm. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. I said, Now, why are they saying that? Because they were scattered abroad before. See, that's what they is the demons that's incarnated in these people that speak in this way. And so now here we have the satanic foundation for the Tower of Babel, see. All right, they lay this foundation, and, and they're dead. I'm talking about in their consciousness. Mm -hmm. They're dead. These people, they're, they're dead. See, that's the death principle here. All right, now we have a satanic immersion, which is psychological. Right. See, in other words, they're psychologically immersed. Why? Keep your finger there. Go back to, I think it's 9, Genesis 9. And... Uh, Just to show you the point that I want to make on this. Uh, 
11, 9 and 11, read that. Genesis 9 and 11. Mm -hmm. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And Elohim said, this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature mm -hmm. that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a sign of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Okay, now, over here, that's the psychological immersion that these people were under. See, Yahweh has said, I make a covenant with every living creature. Right. So now these guys here, they, they had a covenant with Yahweh and they broke that covenant. How did they break the covenant? By building this tower. Why? Because they said, we don't want to be scattered. Right. Again. Just in case. It, and they see the ball in the sky. And they, they looked at it because Yahweh said, well, I put my ball in the sky. When you see the ball, that's a reminder of my promise. They saw it. And they said, nah, I don't believe it. We'll build a tower just in case he changed his mind. See? And so that's the psychological immersion. See, they didn't believe Yahweh. So in their minds, they broke the covenant right. with Yahweh. Because remember, Yahweh, we read Yahweh made a covenant with every living creature. So these living creatures here said, nah, we don't believe it. We're going to build a tower. So they broke the covenant. Satanic immersion. Psychological. Okay. All right. And so now, keep reading. Uh, and, it can, and it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, and the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Okay, it's going to be seen. So the whole world can see it. Anybody can see it. All right? Now, go back to the Tower of Babel. See? And they saw it. They saw the bow. And here's something else that, that maybe you ought to think about. This event happened 101 years after the flood. Noah and his sons are still alive. Because mm -hmm. Noah lived after. See, Noah lived 950 years altogether. 600 years, he lived in the antediluvian age. Mm -hmm. 350 years, he lived in the post-diluvian age. So Noah was still alive right. when the Tower of Babel was built. And he saw this. They looked at it. Yahweh and the like, he saw this. He saw what his, his offspring were doing. And they're like, what is wrong with these folks? They, don't they know Yahweh made a covenant with us? But keep reading. Genesis 11 and 5. And Yahweh came down to see the city uh -huh. and the tower. How did he come down to do that? He just come out of a cloud or something? No, Noah's still around. The Holy Spirit is in Noah and Shem. Right. So they come down to, just like Moses and Aaron came down to see what Pharaoh was doing. And so now here's Yahweh, he's coming down. He's, saying, he's coming down to see what these people are doing. I'm talking about Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah's still alive, and he's looking at this as like, well, this, is what, this is what my kids are doing, you know, they're doing this, but read. Which the children of men builded, mm -hmm. and Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, mm -hmm. and this they begin to do, mm -hmm. and now nothing will hinder them from anything they purpose to do. Mm -hmm. Go to, let us go down. And there confound their language. Now, so now let us go down. Now, here, this is where the descending part, is, the spirit law, the spoken word, this cloud descending on top of now. This is a transcript, but Dr. Kennedy explains this. He said, there was a thick mist that descended over them. See, they're trying to ascend by building the tower. That was ascending. But here's this cloud here descending on them. Okay? But we... That they may not understand one another's speech. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon mm -hmm. the face of all the earth. In other words, he, 
this cloud descended on them and they confused their languages. You know, instead of one language, it became many. Right. See, it that began to sound like Babel, B-A-B-B-E-L. Now, Babel, or Babel, the Tower of Babel, see, Terminology. <clears throat> see, Babel, see, Babel, see, see, Bab, see, Bab, the word Bab means gate, mm -hmm. gate, and L is short for element. So, Babel, when you look at the etymology of it, it means gate of L. Right. And that's showing you the self-exaltation that Nimrod had. Because you see, the Tower of Babel was really his throne. Right. Yep. It was his throne on the earth. See. Hmm. Interesting. This is coming to me a little bit now. Maybe I could do something with this. Go to the textbook for a minute. Volume four. Volume four, page forty seven. section that says 490 year cycle and the Tower of Babel. Four ninety year cycle and the Tower of Babel. Twenty two forty seven BY equals Tower of Babel built. Minus sixteen fifty six AM equals flood. Total five nine five hundred and ninety one years different minus 101 years from the flood to Tower of Babel. Mm -hmm. Total 490 year cycle with the Tower of Babel, confusion of tongues. Mm -hmm. uh, 23 BY, I mean sorry, 2348 BY equals year of the flood. Minus 2247 BY equals year of the Tower of Babel. Total 101 years from the flood to Tower of Babel. 457 BY equals commandment by Artaxerxes to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah. Plus 33 years equals the ministry of Yahshua the Messiah. Total 490 year cycle reconciliation of tongues at Pentecost. All right, now, this is what I'm going to try to do here. Now, <clears throat> the 490 year cycles, all right, 490 years, like 70 weeks of years. Now, we use them, like on this chart here, to show Yahweh is, you know, is working his clockwork. Because 70 years is 70 times 7. 7 denotes perfection, okay? However, you can use those 70 years or perfection to point out right. imperfection. Right. And that's what she read. She read about how the 490 year cycle was put on the Tower of Babel or perfection, pointing out imperfection. See, imperfection is, see, seven, if seven denotes perfection, then six would denote imperfection. Right. Okay? This is something Dr. Kimmy did. I need a darker. See, he did it. He did this, you know, one time, Dr. Kimmy. And he showed this is the devil. See, the devil got cast out of heaven. He got cast out of heaven down to the court roundabout, but he tries to get back up, but he can't, because there's a veil here that rebuffs him right back down. See. See, he's in the court roundabout. He's even in the only place because he because he has the power of the prince of the air. Right. Okay. But he can't get back up here. There's a veil here. 
So that's his number is six. Six is one less than seven. Okay? So now we're going to have perfection pointing out imperfection, which is the six. Okay? Now, uh, boy, what time I got? I got to backtrack a little bit. Uh, get Genesis 7 and 11. And no, no, you stay in the textbook and read the 490 cycle with Noah. And Noah. 490 year cycle and Noah. Mm -hmm. 120 days equals 120 years Noah preached. Mm -hmm. 360 days equals one year or 360 days Hebrew time. Plus 10 days equals 10 days plus one year equals flood was upon the earth. All right, Noah and the flood. Total 490 days or years the ark settled on the Mount Ararat. Okay, now, that's the flood. Now, read 7 and 11. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the same month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were open. Okay, May, May 17th. 2348, that's when the flood happened. All right, now, 8 in, I think it's Genesis 814. Genesis 8 and 14. And in the second month of the seventh and twentieth day of the month mm -hmm. was the earth dried. And Elham spoke unto Noah. Go, 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 hit the 13th verse. Okay. And it came past. In the six hundred and first year. Behind the six hundred and first year. Go in, ahead. In the first month. Mm -hmm. The first day of the month. The waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark. And looked and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day. On the, the month, on the seventh and twentieth day, which is the twenty-seventh day, read. Was the earth dry? All right, was the earth dry? Now it's just a matter of arithmetic. That should tell you right there. We read the beginning of the flood. Now we read. The, we just read the end of the flood. So I let you know that the flood lasted for one year. Two plus two. That's canceled. Seventeen from twenty-seven. That's ten. So the flood lasted for one year and ten days. That's up here. Because one year in prophetic time is 360 days. See, we read that Noah was 600 years old when the flood happened. Right. See, read 6 and 1. Genesis 6 and, six and 3, I think. Genesis uh, 6 and 3. Yahweh said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, uh -huh. for he is but flesh. Mm -hmm. Let his days be 120 years. 120 years. And it's the same year when Yahweh commissioned Noah to preach. So Noah was 600 years old when the flood happened, but he was 480 years old when Yahweh commissioned him to preach. See? And you can even show a 490 cycle with Noah because when Noah was commissioned to preach, how many generations is he from Adam? How many generations is he from Adam? Huh? Ten. Ten. He's ten generations from Adam. So that would make 490 cycle in principle with Noah. But right now I want to deal with this. This is the flood. This is not just Noah, but this is also the flood. Alright? See, Noah preached 120 years. The flood lasted for one year, which is 360 days, prophetically speaking, because that's how many days there are in a prophetic year. Ten days lagged over, then you got 490. All right, a flood. Mm. Keep that in mind, because we're going we're gonna to revisit this. Now, let's go back to the Tower of Babel. Now, we said, and you can get Genesis 11, 11th chapter, pretty much where you left off. <coughs> um, I'll start with Genesis 11 and 8. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh scattered them abroad them scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth, mm -hmm. and they left off building the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, mm -hmm. because Yahweh did there confound the language. He did confound the language, and the word Babel is like 
the word babble, B-A-B-B-E-L, B-A-L-E, babble, like babbling, like a babbling book, where somebody right. just keep going on and on and on and on and on, you know. But go ahead. The language of all the earth. Mm -hmm. And from thence did the Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Mm -hmm. These are the generations of Shem. Mm -hmm. Shem was a hundred years old and begat Arphaxis. Arf 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 mm -hmm. At two years after the flood. Two years after the flood. Now we're going to do something to show you how we determined the date of the, power of the Tower of Babel. Okay. All right, keep reading. And Shem lived after he begat Arphaxis, mm -hmm. 500 years, and begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And Arphaxis lived five and thirty years, and begat Selah. Five and thirty years, that's thirty-five. Five and thirty, thirty-five. Okay, keep going. And Arphaxis lived after he begat Selah, four hundred and three years, mm -hmm and begat sons and daughters. And Selah lived 30 years and begat Eber. And begat 30 years and he begat Eber. Go ahead. And Selah lived after he begat Eber 403 years and begat sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. And Eber lived four and 30 years and begat Pelech. All right, four and 30 years and begat Pelech. Now we're gonna stop there. Why are we stopping there? Just turn the page back to, uh, what is it at? I think it's 10 and 25. Genesis 10 25. 10, Genesis 10 25. Uh -huh. And unto Eber were born two sons. The mm -hmm. name of one was Peleg. That we just read about him in the other sky. Peleg, but, but read. For in these days was the earth divided. Now, when Peleg was born, that's when the earth was divided, or that's when the tongues were confused. See? Now, this is what I'm doing. Now, I took all those, there were four generations, and I took these numbers, and when you add them up, it comes out to 101 years. See that now? Now, right here, we, where's it at? Uh, right here. We got it right here. See right here? It says the flood, BBYM 2348. 2348, that's when, that's when the flood was. So now the flood was 2348 BBY. And it's 101 years later, then that means that in 2247 BBY, see this is where the Tower of Babel. Foundation. 2246. This is how Dr. Kennedy got God. I'm showing this to you in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I got the 101 years that we read that there. See? All right? Now, now what he did, he took the 101. Okay. Uh, now go, go back to the textbook so we can see this, how it's done. All right? Now, he said this. That. Uh, just read that again. Tower of Babel. 490 year cycle and the Tower of Babel. 2247 BY Tower of Babel built. All right, what, all right, what now? 2247 BY equals the Tower of Babel built. Uh huh. Minus 1656 AM equals the flood. It's not minus 6 AM. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the reason why. We told you back here. They were under a satanic immersion. Hmm. Psychological. Why? Because Noah was told over here about the covenant and the bow in the sky. Right. All right? All right. So in other words, let's put it to you like this. The psychological immersion, the, the satanic immersion here was going on, was simply that they had water on the brain. I'm talking about those demons that were incarnated in these people. They had water on the brain. And so they looked at the bow and said, nah, we don't believe that. We're going to build we're going to build a tower, mm -hmm. just in case he changes his mind, you know, so that, you know, we won't be scattered, you know, we'll have a tower above the mountains, you know, and, and we won't get flooded out, see, so because they have water on the brain, that's why we're using this number, 1656, which is the, the, number, the age of the antediluvian age, that ended in a flood, all right, now the difference of that is what? 
591 years difference. Now that's the difference. 591 years difference. And then what does he do? Minus 101 years mm -hmm. from the flood to the Tower of Babel. Now minus the 101 years that we determined for this date, he just takes it and makes 490 years. In other words, because see, 490 is 70 times 7, which is perfection. So here you have perfection pointing out imperfection. See that now? See, now that's in the post-Diluvian age. Now in the anti-Diluvian age, we can get this scripture right quick. Genesis 4th chapter. Get uh, Genesis 4 and uh, uh -oh. 23. Genesis 4 and 23. And Lamech said unto his wives, Adah and Zillah, mm -hmm. Hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech. Mm -hmm. Hearken unto my speech. Mm -hmm. For I have slain a man for wounding me. Mm -hmm. and a young man for bruising me. Mm -hmm. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Seventy, in other words, surely Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Well, what does that mean? Seventy times seven, that's 490. Mm -hmm. Perfection pointing out imperfection. And so now by doing that, and we told you that six, the number six is one less than perfection, so let's just put this over here. Uh, let me get this out of the way. Now what we just read with Lamech, see, because he was the inheritor of the, the city of Enoch. The city of Enoch was, I mean, let's just put it to you real plainly. That was Cain's throne right. on earth. That was his throne on earth. And so now that's a six for this whole age. The number six assessed to this age to the city of Enoch and, the, and his kingdom and their, and their generations that came after that. Laban was, uh, he was the sixth generation from Cain and he ruled, okay? So now we see the six here. Now we just showed you the six with the Tower of Babel. Right. See, so that's the six here. Perfection pointing out imperfection. So now, and look, that was a, see, in each case, Cain built the city of Enoch, that was a throne on earth. Nimrod built the Tower of Babel, that was a throne on earth. Here, back here in this age, the present age, the Vatican, mm -hmm. that's a throne on earth. Right. See, they'll let you know who's really ruling. That's a throne on earth. And I say, well, how do you know that? Well, let's, let's, let's get some scriptures here. Let's get Revelations, the 12th chapter. Revelation. Uh, uh, 12 and... Uh, you have two. Uh, oh, let's start with 7. What says... Uh, um, yeah, we can start there, I guess. We, we'll get it all in here. Go ahead. You're in the holy name? Yes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. 12 and 2. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed in the sun, mm -hmm. and the moon under her feet, mm -hmm. and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Mm -hmm. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay, now, hold on, pause for a moment. Uh, we have it, this, this was a good illustration. Uh, the chart right there. Yeah, I, I see the, 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 yeah, right here. Here's, here's the dragon here. Here's the woman. Well, let's, let's, let's come over here. Here's the woman clothed in the sun. Right. All right, the woman clothed in the sun and the moon under her feet. Mm -hmm. See, the moon represents those kind of ones. Right. See. see, so the moon is under her feet. So we're not, we're not, we're not under that anymore. <laughs> All right, here's the woman clothed in the sun, and she's ready to give birth. Now, I'll come over here. Here's the dragon that we just read, seven heads, ten horns. All right, and he's pursuing this woman, all right, who's, who's, who's going to give birth. 
See, which is really the same thing today. The devil is pursuing you. Right. If you if you if you're about to give birth or become born of the Holy Spirit, then he's gonna pursue you. He's gonna pursue you. Pursue you as well. Okay? But keep reading. Six. And she brought forth a man child. A man child, see, really. Who is Yah who is the Holy Spirit? Who is Yahshua, really? See. That's that's who that really is. Yahshua born in you. Right. See. That's who the devil is after. But, but continue. Who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And her child was caught up unto Yahweh mm -hmm. and to his throne. Mm -hmm. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared of Yahweh that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that was twelve hundred and sixty days. That's that's another lecture in itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I won't I don't know what time is. I don't know if I'll be able to get to that today, but I'm going after something else here. So let's get to that. Continue. And there was war in heaven. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, mm -hmm. and the dragon fought against, against fought and with his angels, mm -hmm. and prevailed not. And they prevailed not. Read. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out. Of, cast out. An mm -hmm. old serpent called the devil and Satan, mm -hmm. which deceived the whole world. It deceived the whole world. See, it deceived, it deceived the whole, it deceived this age. <laughs> they didn't deceive all the angels, but people say, oh, all the angels don't know the angels. All the angels did not get deceived. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you know that right now. If anybody disagrees with it, feel free to have a chat with me. Right. <clears throat> Come on now. See, but he didn't deceive all the But this age, he, he did deceive the whole age. The whole world, the, the earth plane, you know, everybody got to see the right, right. Yeah, you know, for sure. But continue. He was cast out into the earth, uh -huh. and his angels were cast out with him. Read. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, mm -hmm. Now is come salvation mm -hmm. and strength, mm -hmm. and the kingdom of our Eloah, Read. and the power of his Messiah. Mm -hmm. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our Elohim day and night. Read. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony, mm -hmm. and their love, not their lives unto death. See, they, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. See, this is the death of the Lamb right here. Right, right. See, and then I said, well, there's, I don't see any blood up here. Well, it's a principle. We're not looking for, this is incorporeal. We're not looking for incorporeal statements. <laughs> okay? But this is the blood of the Lamb. Here. Right. This is the death of this is this is your salvation. This is, your salvation was worked out long before anything else came about. That's what Dr. Kinley said. Now, if you want to disagree with that, feel free. But I'll stick with that statement. In the book. Okay. Continue. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the captures of the earth mm -hmm. and of the sea, for the adversary is come down unto you, having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Mm -hmm. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, mm -hmm. he per persecuted the woman which brought forth of the man child. He persecuted the woman, see. It is the woman here that brought forth the man child. See, in other words, this is showing you the day of Pentecost, and then seven years later, the Gentiles. See, the man See, the man child is Yahshua and Messiah being born in you, or the Holy Spirit. But that's through the preaching of the gospel, which the Satan is trying to stop. When it comes to birth control, mm -hmm. that is Satan's modus operandi. This birth, he's the greatest birth control agent that is, by any means necessary. Trip you, abort you, whatever, miscarry. You know, to make you not be born of the Holy Spirit or be translated into the kingdom. Right. See, that's his job to do, to prevent you from, from to prevent that happening to you. Okay, but read. And to the woman were given two wings. Uh-huh. Of a great eagle. Uh, two wings of a great eagle. That would be like the law of the prophets. Read. And she might fly into the wilderness, mm -hmm. into her place, mm -hmm. where she is nourished for a time, and times, and time, half a time. And so the, the wilderness, that would be the, right there in the holy place, where she's nourished for a time, times, and a half a time, which is the same as three and a half, for 42 months. See, which is Yahshua on the side, really, because he, because, because see, here, the 603,000, they died out here, but there was a new birth, 144,000, right. see, that left and went into Canaan's land. 
This is the reason why you are in the holy place. This is the reason why you stand in the holy place. You stand in the holy place so that you can become born of the Holy Spirit. Once you are born of the Holy Spirit, then that elevates you into the most holy right. place, into the bosom of Abraham or the bosom of Yahweh, who is Yahshua. See, you stand in the holy place, but you don't stay there. See, to stay there, we like the 603,000. They, they stayed in the holy place too, but they stayed there dead. Right. But they're still in the holy place. Mm -hmm. But they did. See, the whole thing is, is, to, is to go from once to here, holy place, then to the most holy place. Just like the Israelites did. The Israelites didn't stay there. There was a new birth that went into kingdom. Right. Well, it's got to be a new birth with you. Once you're, at, once you're born of the Holy Spirit, then you got to go up in here too. It's really that simple. But keep reading. From the face of that serpent. Mm -hmm. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water mm -hmm. and flood after the woman. Now he cast out water and flood after the woman. What do you mean? See, the flood of erroneous doctrine. Right. See. The flood of erroneous doctrine, see, and the flood of erroneous doctrine in this present kingdom age comes from the Vatican. St. Peter's Cathedral, as a matter of fact. Saint, the Vatican, in the Vatican you have St. Peter's Basilica. The word basilica means a royal house. Inside this royal house you have St. Peter's Cathedral. The word cathedral means throne. So this is where the ruler of this present kingdom age lives at, in the Vatican. He's, and out of his mouth, or his doctrines, it's the flood of doctrines, of erroneous doctrine that is drowning the world. Here's what I mean by that. Is there anything else there? Let me just finish this. That he might cause the woman that to be carried away of the flood. To be carried away, and that's what happened. To, to the world. They got carried away in this flood of the Roman stuff. Right. Now let's consider this. St. Peter's Cathedral, all right, as an edifice, was built. It was built by, it was six architects, but the main architect that built it was this guy. His name was Bramante, all right? Now the building of St. Peter's Cathedral started in 15, 06 AD. And believe it or not, it took 120 years to build it. So it wasn't finished until 1626 AD. Now remember, we read the scripture that said the devil opened his mouth and let out a flood. Right. Right? See, the devil, the devil can do no more than what Yahweh allows him to do. And, and if anything, He's a copycat because the scripture says in Isaiah 14 and 12, I shall be like right. the Most High. Well, let's look at this. He said he's going to be like the Most High. He said, I'm going to give out a flood. What do you mean? Well, let's look back here. We talked about the flood back here with Noah, right? Noah preached 120 years, and the flood lasted for one year, which is 360 days, prophetically speaking, and 10 days. And up together, it's 490 years in principle. So now, if the devil's going to copy the flood, then we can take the flood and lay it on to the devil and see how he's running. Because see, the 120 years, well, we got that right there. And see, get Numbers 14.34 right there. Numbers 14 and 34. Mm -hmm. After the number of the days in which ye surveyed the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, mm -hmm. shall ye bear your, your iniquities, mm -hmm. even 40 years, and ye shall know the withdrawal of my promise. All right, now that's prophetic time. A day for a year and a year for a day. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to take these numbers and, uh, and apply it with prophetic time. So the 360 here, we'll go over here, and we'll put 360 a day for a year, and that will bring you up to 6, 8, 1986 AD. Then we'll take the 10, 10 days here, we'll make that prophetic, 10 years, and we'll bring this here, and that would be 1996. 80. All right. 
And then now uh, the four year error, we can't forget about the four year error. Well, so we'll throw a four year error into this. And that will bring us up to 2000 AD. Now, why am I doing that? Well, if you remember back in 1997, I believe, Pope John Paul II said that he was going to declare right. the year 2000 as a jubilee year. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. But we know it ain't. But he declared it because he said he's going to change the times and seasons. But it's going according to the four. But it's the, going according to the four ninety year cycles. In other words, perfection is pointing out imperfection. You see that now? See, that's four hundred ninety years right there. So perfection pointing out imperfection, and that means that's a six. So now we said that the city of Cain, Cain city, the city of Enoch, that was a throne, and we and we read what Laban said. Surely Laban should be avenged 70 times 7, that's 490, perfection pointing him out. That's a 6 here. Mm -hmm. In this age, we show how the 490 cycle was pointing out the Tower of Babel, did we not? And it's in the textbook. So that's a 6 here. So now we just showed you with, with the, the Vatican, the 490 cycle within in the building of St. Peter's Cathedral, that's a 6 here. Here. Mm -hmm. So in the three ages of time, a six, 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 and then the universal revelation, there ain't no more sixes. These come up after that. There ain't no more sixes after this. Mm -hmm. It's only three of them, six, six, six. There ain't no six in this, in this age coming up. There will, there will be no six mm -hmm. in the fifth age. <laughs> okay? But here, he's cut off. Right. But it's showing you perfection pointing out imperfection. City of Enoch, perfection pointing out imperfection, Tower of Babel, perfection pointing out imperfection, St. Peter's Cathedral. See that now? Okay? Now, how much time do I got? Maybe I can get this in here. I think it's Daniel 7.24, maybe. Daniel 7.24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him? Yeah, 524, you're in the holy name, okay. I take it. So it's probably 524 in your book. 724 and uh, 725 actually in the King James Version. Okay, Daniel 5 and 24 in holy name. 20, 25. 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High mm -hmm. and shall wear out the sons of the Most High. And think to change the festivals and laws. Oh gosh, I hate that. Somebody read the key, J. Bird. I forgot <laughs> about A.B. Trainer. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody got a key, J.? Yeah. The festivals. Because you know, that's what he believed in, you know. He believed in cardinal orders. And I didn't know, realize that A.B. Trainer was, a, he was a proponent of the, he was part of the sacred name movement right. that started in Michigan. Back in the 1930s, the same time when Dr. Kinney received his vision. See, uh, part of the reason why Dr. Kinney didn't even use the names at first, though he knew it, because he didn't want to be associated or mistook for these people. Oh, yeah. See, they believed in the names, but they also believed in cardinal ordinances. All right. Do we have a King James Version? Yes, uh, Thank you. Daniel mm -hmm. 6 and you said 25. No, you're in the King James, and then it's 725. Oh. And he shall speak. Great words against the Most High, uh -huh. and shall wear out the sons of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, mm -hmm. and they shall be cast into his hand unto a time and times and divided of times. All right, time and times and the dividing of times. All right. All right now. A time. We, we, we told you what a time was. A time is the same as a prophetic year. All right? A prophetic year, we told you, is 360 days. Okay? Now, I, could, I don't have to leave it like that. I could go on and say this, that a time is the same as, uh, that a time is the same as 12 months. All right? I can even say, well, time is just simply one year. Mm -hmm. A time is one of these old uh, uh, 
uh, fashion turns, you know, around the time of Shakespeare, you know, the way people used to talk before mm -hmm. the prevalence of, of mechanical clocks. People would say that, you know, oh, Iggy, what's going on? I haven't seen you for a time. Right. Meaning I ain't seen you for a year. Mm -hmm. Now if I say, well, I haven't seen you for a season. Well, how long is a season? About three months. So you see, that's how people talk because of the way the weather was, because we got mechanical clocks. So now time is 300, it's 360 days, 12 months, and one year. Now times, because it's plural, is simply two times whatever it is up here. I'm just trying to make it easy for folks. Right. People get, they get complicated doing this, and it's not complicated at all. Two times 360 is what? 720. Two times 12 is 24 months. Two times one year, two years. Now here it says the division, the dividing of time. Now if you know a time is 360, 12 days, 12 months, one year, then the division of time is simply half of what it is on the top line. So what is half of 360? Huh? 180. 180. Okay, this thing keeps going down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, I'm doing that. I think it'll stay down. Okay, half of 12 months, six months. Half of one year, it's a half year. All right, now. It's just a matter of addition. Okay? Now it's just a matter of addition. Add this column up, this will be 1260 days. Add this column up, this will be 42 months. Add this column up, three and a half years. They're all the same, just different manifestation. 1260, 42 months, three and a half years, okay? Now John of the Isle of Patmos is confirming this. We can read it and, and we're gonna keep your finger in Daniel, but we will come back to Daniel. Revelation 11, 11th chapter. Revelations 11 and 1. Mm -hmm. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Mm -hmm. And the angel stood saying, Rise, and measure the temple of Yahweh, mm -hmm. and the altar, and its confines. Mm -hmm. But the court which is outside the temple, leave out, and measure it not. Mm -hmm. For it is given unto the nations. Mm -hmm. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Right here, 42 months. It's right, it's right here on the board. Mm -hmm. See, John is confirming what Daniel is talking about. Continue. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, mm -hmm. and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. See, a score is 20. Three scores is 60. So 1260. That's right here, too. Mm -hmm. See that? It's all right here. Okay. Is there anything else there? Um, clothes and sackcloth. Go ahead. These are the two olive trees mm -hmm. and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouths and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in his this manner be killed. Jump down to the eighth, eighth verse. Eighth, 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom, and Egypt, where also our Savior was crucified. Mm -hmm. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, mm -hmm. and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. See, it's all up here. See, John, John is confirming what Daniel is writing. Keep going. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them 
that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered mm -hmm. into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. See, Yahshua's three and a half years of his ministry, and that's his death, burial, resurrection, he resurrected. They re he didn't resurrect by himself. Those who died in the faith resurrected with him mm -hmm. and followed him into the city of Jerusalem. Right. See, John is confirming what the prophets are saying, what Yahshua is saying, what Moses is writing. See, all of that. But we go back to Daniel, because we want to get this in here for the time is up. Go to the 12th chapter of Daniel. Daniel you can start there, 12 and 1. And I have the time, Mike. Speak in the mic. Forget. <laughs> and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which stands for the children of that people. See, now here he is. Stand, I'm, I'm pointing to, to Joshua's tombstone, because mm -hmm. this is where Michael was standing up for the people. He's the one that rolled the boulder away. Right. Okay? Keep reading. And there shall be a time of trouble, mm -hmm. such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Why? Because when Yahshua resurrected from the grave, see those demons that were incarnated in the scribes and Pharisees sequestered themselves in right. the temple that day and didn't come out because they were scared. They saw what Yahshua had did. He resurrected from the grave, and all these folks that resurrected in the faith followed him. They, it was a fearsome sight to these people, so they, they sequestered themselves up in the temple. And they stayed in that temple for that whole day. See, when Yahshua resurrected and walked about with those who resurrected with him. See, but, but go ahead. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, mm -hmm. everyone that shall be found written in the book. Mm -hmm. And many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake. That, that's what happened here. Okay, go ahead. Some to everlasting life, mm -hmm. and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Three. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmaments, and they shall turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Mm -hmm. But thou, O Daniel, shut up thy words and seal the book, mm -hmm. even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. And, and listen, don't mistake this. It says till the time of the end. What end? The end of the post Olivia age, this is where, which is Joshua's death, burial, resurrection, then 50 days later, Pentecost. This is the time of the end, not the end of time. Right. All right? Don't mistake that. The time of the end. This is Joshua's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and pouring out the Holy Spirit on a dead parent. This is the time of the end of the post Olivia age. Go ahead. Many shall run to and fro, mm -hmm. and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood two, other two, mm -hmm. the one on one side, mm -hmm. and this side of the bank of the river. All right, down the river. What river is he talking about? This is the Jordan River. He saw an angel on one side, and saw an angel on the other side. All right, continue. And other on the side of the banks of the river. And one said to the man, clothed in linen, which is upon the waters of the river, mm -hmm. how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I said, now one is speaking and talking to the other one on the other side of the river. said, so how long will it be of these wonders? Read. And I heard a man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters. Which was upon the waters, read. Of the river. Mm -hmm. Then he ended up this right hand, and his left hand mm -hmm. unto the heavens. In other words, he, this is what he did. He held up a, look like a Y. Held up his hands, just like that. And said unto the heavens, read. And swear by him that liveth forever, and it shall be for a time mm -hmm. and times and a half a time. And a time, times and half a time. We just a put, which we just put on the board. What do you mean? Three and a half years. What do you mean? That's when Yahshua was going to come in. See, Yahshua was doing his ministry three and a half years. When, when this happens, then that's when these things will happen. See, after time, times, and the right of the times. Okay, continue. And when he shall accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people, mm -hmm. all these things be, shall be finished. Read. 
and I heard, but I understood not. Mm -hmm. Then said I, O oh my Yahweh, what shall it be the ends of these things? Mm -hmm. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Till the time of the end. Go ahead. Many shall be purified and shall uh, and made white mm -hmm. and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, mm -hmm. and none of the wicked shall understood, understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, mm -hmm. and the abomination that maketh desolation set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. All right, a thousand two hundred and ninety days. What do you mean? We got a scale here. Mm -hmm. we, we made a scale. So now all you have to do is use the scale to understand what Daniel is, is being told here. It says 1,290 days. Well, what does that mean? Well, 1,260, we already have that, and it's just 30 more days. That would be 1,290 days. What do you mean? Well, let's look at it. 1,260 is the same as three and a half. Three and a half, right? And then we got 30 over here. So 1,290 in principle would be 33 and a half years, which is how, how long Joshua was there. See, when the daily sacrifice was taken away after 33 and a half years, after his death, look, come over here. Here's Daniel. He's in the post of Louis and H here. He's, in a, he's like maybe 700 years from Joshua. And so now he's in a vision, which is spanning eternity. And he's looking down the line and he sees, oh, I see here, 1200, talking about the cross, 1290 days. Oh. After 1290 days, the sacrifice will be taken away right. for 33 and a half years of Joshua's life. Keep reading. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Now, Daniel's looking all the way down to the cross, to, the, to Joshua's death, burial, resurrection, and the day of Pentecost. Now he's looking past the cross into another age. He says, Now, blessed he that waiteth to the 1,335 days. What do you mean by that? Who's down here in this present age that was waiting? Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to find out in a minute because see, it says, blessed is he who waited to the 1,335 mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. 1,335 minus 1,290, and that will give you 45. Who, the one who waited has got the number 45 on it. What do you mean? See, Dr. Kinley preached for 45 years, right. all right? Why? Because he was that seventh angel. See, and see, get that scripture. I think it's in, uh, no, keep reading. Keep reading uh, Daniel, then we'll go, go to Revelations. But go thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot until the end of, the end of days. Now stand in thy lot until the end of the days. In other words, you, you be here and be ready when Yahshua resurrect. Because he, when he resurrect, he's going to call. He's going to call you out. So you'll be standing in your lot. Mm -hmm. See? And that's the same way it is with us today at the Universal Revelation. Stand in your lot. Stand in your spot. See? And be ready for that. Now, I we're almost done. Get the, I think it's Revelation. Was this the fifth and seventh angel? I think it's the fifth chapter. Uh, ten, no, ten and... Uh, 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 Revelations 10 and 7. Revelations 10 and 7. Uh -huh. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, mm -hmm. when he shall begin to sound the mystery of Yahweh, should be finished. All right, now the seventh angel. Now, why is he talking about the seventh angel? Because Daniel's looking back on this. I mean, John looking back on Daniel. See, see people sit up and say, well, Dr. Kennedy's the seventh angel. Well, look, if you don't know this, then you really don't know Dr. Kennedy's the seventh angel. You're just repeating something somebody else said. Mm. How are you going to prove that Dr. Kinley is the seventh angel? <laughs> this is how you prove it. Now, if you don't know this, then you just say it. I mean, you can say it. Oh, well, Dr. Kinley's the seventh angel. Okay, prove it to me. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, uh. if you don't know this, then you can't prove it. I'm just telling you plain. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm showing this to you so that you can know this. So that when you do make a, you know, you know get out there and say, well, Dr. Kinley's the seventh angel. Well, Proof. How do you see Well, this is how. This is how. We're showing it. See, and John is confirming he said the seventh angel. Why is he saying that? Because he's looking back on what Daniel wrote back to. 
He who waiteth. He who waiteth. Blessed is he who waiteth. Because when he comes along, the purpose of Yahweh is about to finish. And that's where we're at now. At the universal revelation. We're down, we're down on the last prophetic seconds of this thing. Okay? And, uh, and we just ask that, that you keep coming to class. Right. You know, whether it be online or if you can get there physically, that's just be in class and learn all that you can. Dr. Kennedy said it best. Learn all that you can because you're going to need it. See, this information, this knowledge, this understanding, okay? Thank you very much for studying with us. Uh, this is any questions, any other comments? Uh, I hope that answered your question a little bit, did it? Did it? Tell me in the back so everybody can hear you. It did. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for studying with us. We really appreciate your support, you know, and, and all. Uh, uh, as always, uh, we hope that uh, the things that were said were edifying to you. And as always, uh, be safe, be healthy. But most of all, be in Yahshua and Messiah. Why? Because he truly is your only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was going to say, I was uh, just looking forward to the, I think they're having a, a convention this, this weekend in uh, Hamilton, Canada. Mm -hmm. so they're going to broadcast? Yeah, well, I, I think they're going to they're going to record it and they're going to upload it later, mm -hmm. for what I've understood. So just kind of look out for it. All right. Okay, and thanks for joining us today on the levels of YouTube and Facebook, those out the uh, four corners of the world. Okay, uh, we thank you. Be back next week. Okay, get some more of this uh, knowledge and understanding of this divine panoramic vision. I ask uh, Nick to come up and dismiss the class for this afternoon. Let us all stand to be dismissed. I'll be reading the doxology from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.